and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you my orchid haul from uh, Kerlin Orchideen in Germany. It was the first time I ever bought from them so I didn't really know what to expect but I know that many people on YouTube are buying orchids from them regularly so well I thought I'd give it a go. And um, I already showed you the haul and the unboxing so this one this film is about what I'm gonna do with each and every one of them I got 12 plants and a little bit different plants I never some genus I never saw before like this one for example uh, let's see here it says Barkeria Kathy what is this what on earth is this flimsy plant looks like it's already dehydrated so it's been lying here for two days but i've been spraying the roots so uh, i thought they would manage but I, I think she's a thirsty plant and needs quite a lot of humidity so i'm gonna put her well not far from the humidifier all right and this one i'm gonna pot, uh, pot in this net basket with large holes in it and i'm gonna stick this one into another basket like this another uh, pop like this and i'm going to use plain bark medium sized bark and some perlite perhaps if it's really necessary it's going to find its way out of the holes but uh we shall see all right what was that cloud and i also got myself this this little gomesa leco long island and this is an Ancidium type orchid with this strange behavior in its way of growing, it's climbing, it's a climber. I don't really like it, but I love the flowers on these guys, so I have to take it, the good with the bad. And it's got a new growth here, and it's also developing a new growth here, so I will find a way put it up in this net basket the same type as the other one as I just showed you and well something like this in plain bark and then put it in this regular pot as a cover an outside cover plain medium bark perhaps some perlite just the same way as my barkeria yeah and I got this new genus as well. It's called Aspatia Silvana. And there's not much to read about it on the internet and Google. If you Google it, you can only find anything. I found some information on Travada's blog, but it didn't really, really tell me anything. Only, yeah, the, the most common information. It's a uh, intermediate. A uh, warm to hot grower grows in a forest, likes yeah sixty to seventy percent humidity, and likes to dry off in between waterings during winter time, and likes to be uh, frequently irrigated during the summer and its growing season, which is also its blooming season. Can you see the buds? Two buds, I got her in bud, and this is something, it's really something. It's going to be nice to see if the buds can, can make it, so I can show you the flowers. Not before long. Alright, and it's going to be sitting in plain bark, just as the other ones, the other two. Plain bark, perhaps some perlite. Yeah, and this uh, part on the outside. Okay. And I also got myself... Two bulbophyllums. It's a division of bulbophyllum oratum. And as my beautiful brown uh, baskets with this little tray under it are finished, and I cannot find anywhere to buy them for the moment, so I have to use this shallow uh, plastic pot with holes in the bottom. So, well, as it's wide enough and shallow I think it's a good pot for it and it's going to be sitting in the same bark as the other ones uh, medium-sized bark 
no perlite, nothing. Medium sized spark and some charcoal in the bottom just to fill it up a little bit so there won't be too much media and too soggy in the bottom. And you can see the new growth here. And yeah, it's nice. It's a nice division, good size. And I also got myself a little bit larger division. But it didn't cost me much more, so much more. Really cheap. Uh, Bulbophyllum lepidum. Really nice looking flowers on the picture. And I, I really have a thing for Bulbophyllums these days, so I just love them. And then they re do really well in bark for me, I must say. Really well in bark. Even though I, I live in a really dry environment, I got 30 to 50 per 60 per percent of humidity. And, uh, yeah, if you grow your orchids on a windowsill, that's that's what you get, you know. It's not easy to change the, cli uh, the, the climate and environment if you don't want your roof or ceiling, inside ceiling, to be black of mold. So, yeah, all right, I'm going to put this one up in this larger basket, hanging basket, and fill this one up really well with charcoal and chunky bark in the bottom, since it's such a large pot for it, but I, I cannot find anything else to put him, put him in, so it's going to have to do. Okay. And this guy, it's called Ketlechea Pink Carambola. It's a uh, Encyclia Mariae times Cattleya pantherina. And there, there's no real picture of it on the internet, so I think it's a new cross. Relatively new cross. And it's not going to be much larger than this one, than it really uh, already is. So, And it's well established in this pot, and I can see no algae. So I'm just going to make a few holes in it and I know this is gonna look scary but um I'm not making the holes where I can see it. live roots or roots <laughs> live I hope they're live considering that price I really hope they're alive all right yeah this little guy cost 23 euro so it better be worth it and it's gonna stay in this pot and in this media as you already have figured out so yeah all right this little guy is my bulbophyllum phalaenopsis that i've been wanting to have for so long and as i said in my earlier video in my orchid haul video i I expected this one to be a little bit larger, but um, well, you can't get everything in life. This is what I got for 14 euro, as you can see on the tag here, 14 euro. So, well, anyways, now I got it, and it's sitting in solid sphagnum moss. So I'm just gonna get rid of the top layer of sphagnum moss and reveal the the right color with no algae gonna get rid of the algae that's what i'm gonna do like this and i'm gonna put some some um the, this coconut husk on top like this and cover it up a little bit since i don't have small gray bark i will have to use coconut husk so there won't be any more algae on top of the media. The algae is eating up the nutrients. So, well, yeah, that's my thought. And it's going to stay in this plastic pot, in this small plastic pot. And I'm going to put it in this little, little um, basket or a cup. And when I water it, I just pour the water into it. and let it sit there for a while. And I just remove it, pour out the water. Yeah. So easy. And 
I also got this little beautiful Cattleya RSA Chan Tzu Golden Orange Golden Boy. And it was a really small one, but it's been blooming. As you can see, it's been in bloom on that growth and there's a little little sheath down there as well but I don't think that's going to develop anything and the newest growth no last year's growth didn't develop anything but we should see we shall see but this one was a really expensive one as well it cost me 23 euro so I really expected it to be larger than this but I I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased anyways since it's, I know and I can see that it's been flowering at this size so it's always nice with a small size orchid that can bloom it's a space saver and it's gonna stay in this media I'm just gonna get rid of the top layer of this algae sphagnum moss as you can see it's brown here and it's green here just gonna press it up a little bit like this underneath from underneath and get rid of this plastic part and I'm gonna put him in in this clay pot and a, a thin layer of some new uh, New Zealand sphagnum moss around so it's gonna stay in this pot for a couple of years even though it's sphagnum moss. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens, but yeah, okay. And I also got me this one that I've been looking for for quite a while. This one is Ruin Ketliante Shenfon Le Dosan Young Min Golden Boy. And it's going to be orange flowers on this guy. And it's been al already been flowering. On this growth, this growth, and this growth, and this growth, uh, well, this growth. So it's been flowering on the five, all of the the larger growth here, uh, pseudobulbs here. So, and it's got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, this little guy. Uh, new pseudobulbs, and as you can see, it's already got a little sheath in it, and this one here. I'm just gonna take it out of the yeah and as you can see this is what we all love so much this tightly pressed ball of sphagnum moss and I learned my lesson last time when I released the cattleya a fussy cattleya from this ball of hard stiff sphagnum moss and almost killed it so I won't do it again I just that's much I can say so I'm just gonna put it here. I'm not gonna do anything with it. It's been working before and it's gonna work this time as well. You gotta stay positive. And I'm gonna put a small thin layer of sphagnum moss around it here to fill it up and release it from the scratch off this, um, this algae moss, the thin layer on top here. All right. This one is, as we call it, Burrigiera Nelly Ayler, the red beautiful cambri orchid this tag they call her cambria nelly Eiler. okay yeah anyways it's got got herself a few lovely new growth one two three new growth and the pseudobulbs look quite plump and beautiful and as well as the new new growth here the new largest new growth here they are not wrinkly. The leaves are not wrinkly. There's nothing wrong with this plant and it's not bubbling in this pot. And it's sitting in plain medium sized bark. What's not to like with this guy? All right. It's that I cannot see the, uh, the roots, but this time I don't really mind. I would just have to make a few ventilation holes here in the bottom so it don't doesn't stay too soggy for too long that's what all I'm gonna do with this guy for now on or for now at least this one is another one <laughs> of course and it's called mm, 
Espresso Catante Yarak Firestar and it's got red reddish <laughs> red orange I don't remember I thought it was yeah red flowers a little bit uh, uh, star shaped flowers yeah but um like like brassia I think it's got brassia in it but anyways it's wobbly it's not steady in the pot so I might as well just yeah as you can see I have to take her out and and put her in some new media and I'm gonna use the same me uh, kind of media medium sized bark in this pot perhaps with some perlite and I'm gonna make some a few ventilation holes in the bottom yeah nothing else and I can see a new lovely new growth here and this one has got really really nice looking pseudobobs oh yeah I like it and now get on to the last plant I just have to reorganize a little bit yeah this is the largest stanhopia I've ever had in my life stanhopia embrae and I think the flowers were white with some black spots and some yellow in, in the center or they didn't really have a picture of the flower on the website so I cannot show it to you but you can look it up at Google but anyways, as you can see, it's climbing its way out of the pot and it looks kind of gross. All the roots are, yeah, are on the outside and a little bit dehydrated, a little bit, quite a lot dehydrated when it arrived to me. So this is my, not my creation uh, yet, <laughs> I might add, but um, it's got herself one new growth here and another new growth here. So, I have to take it out of this pot. As you can see, it's got some live roots in here. And it's potted in small to medium sized bark. And for this guy or girl, I'm gonna use this Cattleya basket with the metal hanger onto it. I'm gonna use uh, charcoal, medium sized bark, perhaps some perlite, and a layer of. Um, Sphagnum moss, I think, in the bottom. And this kind shoots out its flower spikes from the bottom of the pot. So I thought it would be suitable to use this one. With so many large holes in the bottom, we cannot fail with the flower spikes. So I think it's going to be beautiful in this pot. Alright, I think I got some repotting to do here. Uh, well, I hope you liked the video and have a good day and see you next time. Bye bye!